Today on our 2016 Chevrolet Colorado, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect with switch for towed vehicles with a supplemental braking system, part number RM-766. Here's what it looks like once it's installed on the vehicle. It's going to be this nice, easy to operate switch that's inside the cab of the vehicle. What this kit is going to do is for vehicles that need to have the battery disconnected, when in tow mode. This is going to make it really easy to do that because it's going to be as easy as the flip of a switch. What's nice about this battery disconnect over some of the more traditional ones is that this one doesn't require you popping the hood and going underneath the hood to disconnect the battery with the quick disconnect, but rather it's as simple as hitting that switch and you're disconnected. Then when you're ready to take it out of tow mode, it's as simple as flipping the switch the other direction and then your battery's reconnected. Here's the solenoid for the quick disconnect. You've got one cable running to one side and one cable that runs up to the other. And they're gonna be the same gauge as the factory cable that comes on the vehicle. It's gonna have these three wires that come out the bottom that run into the cab. And those are what is gonna allow you to operate this through that switch. It features a 7.5 amp fuse that's gonna help to protect the system. And this kit is gonna come with all the hardware necessary in order to install it. And it gives you two different mounting options. You've got self-tapping screws that you can run into metal, or you've also got nuts and bolts in order to bolt it to anything that may be plastic. And then it'll just have a ground wire that you'll need to run along with that. And here you can see where our cables come up and make our connections. We've got this one that comes over to our stud, which replaced the factory cable that went there. And then the cable that goes to the battery, we've got going to this other cable, which we connected here with a nut, bolt, and washers. Now that we've gone over some features, let's go ahead and show you how to install it. First thing we'll need to do is we'll need to find a good place to mount our solenoid. Now, when searching for a location to mount your solenoid, you'll want it to be under the hood, within reach of the battery, by our cables here. But the solenoid's gonna need to be grounded, and you can do that by either tapping in the metal, which we're gonna be doing here, I already used the self-tapping screws to tap out the holes, or you can mount it to something plastic and you can use the nuts and bolts in order to do that. And then it comes with this white wire with two terminal ends in order to ground it separately to something metal. So on this one, we will be mounting it right here. So I'll take my wires here and I'll feed them up the direction that I want them to go towards the battery. Then I'll get it lined up with those holes and install my self-tapping screws. My battery wires that'll be connecting, I just routed here along the side of the battery and just keep them tucked away. Before we begin hooking up any of our terminals for our positive cable, we'll need to remove the negative battery cable so that we don't have any sparking accidents. Take a 10 millimeter socket, get that loosened up and set it down to the side of the battery. Now we can pull our cover up here and expose our connections for a positive cable. And where we're gonna connect these two cables is gonna be right here. We're gonna connect it one to this cable that goes down to the battery post and the other one that's gonna bolt down in replacement of this over the stud here. And these cables are both labeled. One's labeled battery cable and the other's labeled battery post. So the battery post is gonna be the one that goes directly to the battery. What we'll do is we'll loosen this up with a 13 millimeter and remove that. Now what I'm gonna do is over here in the side of this plastic cover, I'm going to cut a few small openings so that these cables can go out the side and we'll still be able to shut this cover. So for this one, I'll take the one labeled battery cable and put it down over that stud and reinstall the nut. And then for this one, the one labeled battery post, it's gonna go to this cable that's coming directly from the battery post. Now with this one, the kit comes with this heat shrink tubing. We're gonna need to slide that down over our cable before we make our connection. So now for our connection, we can put our bolt through and then between these, we need to put one of these star washers and we'll put our cable down. Then on top, 
Underneath the nut, we'll put the other star washer. And then we'll get our nut started onto the bolt. For that, we can use a 13 millimeter wrench and socket to tighten. So now we can take our heat shrink and slide it over our connection. And we want this heat shrink to completely cover all the metal components of our connection there. So once we've got it in place, we can take a heat gun. And a heat gun's going to work best. You can use other heat sources, but a heat gun's definitely going to work the best for you. And then we'll heat that up in order to shrink it down. That's going to help prevent corrosion on that connection in there because moisture won't be able to get in there. Now we've got our gray sheathed wires. So we've got the red, white, and black wires inside. And I went ahead and just took about an inch and a half or so off the end of one side. So now what I'll do is I'll strip the ends of those wires back. So then using my red, black, and blue wires that are coming off of my battery disconnect solenoid, I'm gonna connect these to them, the black to black, red to red, and then white to blue. I'm gonna use the butt connectors that came with the kit in order to do that. Now I'll take electrical tape and just wrap up each of these connections just to help prevent moisture from getting in there and possibly corroding inside our connector. Then the yellow wire that's coming off the bottom of our solenoid, we can just fold that over and tape it up as it will not be used. So I routed my wires, I routed them back, and you can follow the gray sheath there of our three wires that comes up over here and then goes through that grommet and then you can see where that gray wire came through the grommet in the firewall. Then I'll remove this cover from underneath the steering column. And once you've removed the two seven millimeter screws from the bottom, you can begin pulling towards the rear of the vehicle to release the clips. Now I'm going to disconnect the connectors for our lighting and four-wheel drive controls. There's just a tab right there. You push in and pull the connector right out. Then on this one over here, that tab's on the bottom side. And then you can let this hang down. Now I used a step drill bit in order to drill this hole out to three quarters of an inch in order to allow our switch to fit through. So this is where our switch will go. Then I also drilled the hole right there in order to be able to route our wires down to the switch. So now I'll secure my switch into my panel here and I'll take my ridge nut and tighten it down. You just want to get that nice and tight by hand. Since it is plastic you don't want to over tighten that. So now we'll take our gray sheathed wires and we'll cut those to the length we need and we'll peel our sheath back. So I'll strip the ends of my wires back and install my three red spade connectors that come in the kit. So with my connections made here, I can put the white wire onto the center of the switch. And then we can put the black and red wires on the outside posts. Now, we'll reinstall our panel. Now we'll take our negative battery cable and reattach it to the battery. Then we'll take our 7.5 amp fuse that comes with the kit and we'll install it into the fuse holder that's on the bottom side of our solenoid. And you'll want to do it in the one that's on the side that has the cable that runs to the battery post. With it all installed and everything hooked back up, now we can test it to see which direction is going to be disconnected so we've got no power and that'd be ready for tow mode, or which side is going to be battery engaged so then it's ready for regular drivability. Put the key in, let's flip it down, try and start the truck. We've got nothing. So let's flip it up. And I can start the truck when I flip it up. 
So when you hit up, that's going to be the drive position and down's going to be the tow position. And this is just a momentary toggle switch. So you'll just click it and it'll click right back to center. And the kit does come with a sticker to indicate drive mode and tow mode so you know which way to press it for each one. That's going to complete our look at an installation of the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect with Switch for towed vehicles with supplemental braking system, part number RM-766 on our 2016 Chevrolet Colorado. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.